just be a dear and use the microphone. Um, give me just one second. Everything bothers him. He's unbothered. He calls it unbothered, but that's what's cute because everything bothers him. He's bothered. I'm a botherina. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Unbothered by Tyra Vera. That's right, it's Unbothered by Tyra Vera, special edition with lashes. My name is Tyra Vera, and I'm your host, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. All right, so Snoopy Bijou is currently not having whimsies, alligator. I didn't give her one because right now I was busy putting lashes on, which we're going to talk all about that. And if it looks like I'm right about to have a transition, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not having a full transition. I just was hanging out with somebody or am hanging out with somebody that I really do like, believe it or not, even though <sighs> you're going to see. She's her own thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Oh, Carla's on me also. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget our sponsor, Carla's Homemade Salsa, with all these lashes and makeup going on right now. Um, Carla's Homemade Salsa. I absolutely love Carla's Homemade Salsa. I had um, made enchiladas for Father's Day. Me and my niece did. Technically, my niece made the enchiladas, and I just took the credit on well, I just realized that my phone wasn't recording. <laughs> well, that's a good thing because you messed up Carlos on my salsa. I did. So now I get to do a do over. Okay. <laughs> Accidents happen, you guys. You know what? I'm not a perfect person, I don't pretend to be a perfect person. What's up, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Unbothered by Tyra Vera. That's right, it's Unbothered by Tyra Vera. I'm your host, Tyra Vera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. If it looks like I'm having a transition, I am not. Um, I just did actually do my makeup today, and a friend of mine that you're going to meet in just a second helped me put on lashes because I've been saying that I want lashes like just to try them just to see what it's like and you know what I'm gonna tell you guys that I really do like lashes but they might be just a little bit too draggy for me at the end of the day anyway my co-host Snoopy Bijou is not having a whimsies alligator I didn't feel like giving her one she's in the chokey right now because she was trying to bite my guest feet and I don't like when she does that. She usually doesn't. I don't, let's not make excuses for this bitch. Every once in a while, that's just what she does. I don't know why she does it. I don't know why she likes getting on my nerves. Anyway, what doesn't get on my nerves is Carla's homemade salsa. I absolutely love Carla's homemade salsa. For Father's Day, I made enchiladas for my dad using Carla's homemade salsa. And actually, I didn't make enchiladas. My niece, Stacy, made enchiladas. And... They were really good. We did some of the red, some of the green. I got to tell you the truth. I liked the red better for enchiladas, which is crazy because I usually like the green salsa for everything else when it comes to Carlos. But for the um, enchiladas, the red was definitely the way to go. Anyway, like I said, we have a guest today. If you don't like me wearing lashes, please blame her. My guest is none other than my friend Claire Don't Start Holly. Claire from the internet, a.k.a. Is there another? My dad calls me Claire Bear. Claire Bear or <laughs> Claire Howley. Howley. Which was a mistake that was made one night when she was doing a show and I just happened to be there. And I thought, is her last name Howley? I had assumed it was Holly this whole time. And then I heard Claire Howley and I was like, oh, my God, now I feel like a fool. So anyway, this is our friend Claire Holly. Give it up for Claire Holly, everybody. Yay! Don't worry, I'll add claps in. <laughs> going wild. Yeah, they're gonna go wild. Trust me, it's gonna be a stadium of people by the time people actually watch this. So I'm gonna. You know what? I just finally paid for Final Cut Pro. I was using the trial, the free trial. Let's give it up for that. See it on the user next. Girl, I'll clap. 
I believe it. Um, Claire, like I said, hooked me up with lashes, and we're starting my transition. It's time to just announce. Claire has decided she's going to show me how to be a woman, and we're going to fully make this transition. You know, if anyone knows how to be an elegant woman, it's it's me. You actually do, though. Like, you <laughs> actually are good at being, like, a girl. I'm very feminine. You are. Until I open my mouth, but... I don't even think that. I think you still yeah, stay. I know, I'm still girly. Yeah, and you it's fun. You know something funny? Um, when I'm around, guy, like when I go to open mics and stuff, I'll lower my voice. Just to be more... Or just to like be alpha. Yeah, yeah. And just less to make a point, I'll lower my voice. Cause I already kind of have a naturally deep voice for a girl, but yeah. I will lower it. Yeah, well, that's one thing I was going to tell you. That that was one post that really made me laugh. For anybody that's not familiar, Claire Holly is a stand-up comedian. It's one of the reasons I like her so much is because I think she's really funny, and I like her sense of humor, and I like just, like, in regular conversation, she's fun, too. And so we'll text back and forth, which, you know, I don't usually text with people, and I don't talk to people a lot on the phone. But Claire's one person that I will actually talk to. But one Facebook post you put up that was really fun to me, and I put, like you know i commented on it was the one when you said you're a um a frat boy in a pretty girl's oh i am yeah i am <laughs> and i was like same but opposite <laughs> like i get it <laughs> and that's one of the things i like about you is you are like the combo so like when it comes to like hanging out you're not super like um, girly in the obnoxious way you know uh -huh. what I mean where everything has to be perfect or like you know it's not like that I'll go out with a wonk lash well yeah and thank thank you for not leaving me with a long <laughs> a wonk lash because right now I'm looking and these eyelashes oh, are a lot feeling it. but they're not wonky no yeah I am feeling it I am <laughs> but I don't need to take feel your it shirt like off <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't need to be feeling it like this all day. And plus, there's a couple of guys off Grindr um, that want to hang out tonight. With me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's enough of you. <laughs> they said I heard there's a frat guy over there and a little girl body. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you guys what happened with Claire and me on Grinder, And she wasn't even a part of it. Me and Claire took a picture as bathing beauties at the Artisan like two weeks ago. So then later on, like, I think it's the next day, I get a message from a guy on Grindr. And he's like, hey, didn't I see you at the Artiston? Remember? He had, I don't know. I think he just said pool party. Did he? I thought he you said Artiston, but like you spelled it wrong. And oh, I was maybe. trying to recreate that. But anyway, um, so he said that he had seen me in the pool. And then I was like, cool. And but like from his description, I wasn't into him or whatever. But I still wanted to know who it was because it felt kind of creep like, you know, like you've seen me, but I haven't seen you. And so I went ahead and asked him to send a picture. And he was like, you're not my type. But um, what about that girl that you were hanging out at the hanging out with at the artisan? And I was just like, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. So shout out BBC Top. You know how to make a girl feel special. <laughs> that was his name. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm looking at you like that because he out was BBC Top. <laughs> BBC Top. <laughs> Doesn't sound like my type either. <laughs> yeah, and as, you know the other thing that's weird is I really did think that I wasn't gonna like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't like myself really. I really just did. Kidding, I These do. lashes really came out when I put my hair back. <laughs> like it really is just a whole different experience. You just Kate Gosselin did. You know I am. Quite the lady today. <laughs> None of my grinder guys better see this because <laughs> this is not mask, as they would say. <laughs> this is not masculine at all. But it looks like stunning. <laughs> I'm, ready. I'm ready to be somebody's wife. I have just gone. You know, me too. And I'm going to put it out that I'm joking. <laughs> Me too. Both of us are. <laughs> Take us, please. <laughs> Somebody, anybody. <laughs> we want it Two embarrassingly bad. <laughs> one gay, one straight. We don't care which one gets which. 
<laughs> Come on, guys. We can work it out. <laughs> yeah, we don't care which one gets which. Just make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> if you want two of the most annoying bitches in the world yeah. in your house. Make two girls happy. <laughs> Don't you know how to please the ladies? <laughs> yeah, this is really gotten out of hand, but it, it's true though. We're both looking to be tied down. We got to get wifed. <laughs> Come on, guys, we're 22. We're not gonna last forever. She's 22. To be honest, I'm 25. I don't. Want, I don't ever want to come off as lying to my future husband. <laughs> we start off on honesty in this house, and you know what I do for fun sometimes? <laughs> what? I don't know if I want. The way you said that was a way like where I don't, I'm not sure. Sometimes if, um, I'll reply to Instagram DMs for fun. I have like f at least 40 requests right now. Okay. And sometimes people will be like, how old are you? And I'll reply and I'll be like 14. <laughs> Just to see where the trajectory goes. Do any of them try to keep talking? Um, a small percentage. Yeah. No, you know what? You get that on Grinder every once in a while. Like somebody will hit you up and you'll be like, you know, how old are you? And they'll be like 16 and I'm an immediate block. Yeah. I'm just like, there's nothing to talk about. And I've been told that that's rude by some of my friends, but I'm like, there's absolutely nothing for me to talk to a kid on a hookup site about. Yeah. Like if it's a fan hitting me up on Facebook, because that's something I've had too, yeah. where kids will hit me up, especially when I did like Logo Network, which was years ago now. Yeah. You know, but when I did that, there were kids that were hitting me up that were like, you know, I'm gay too. And I saw you on TV and that kind of stuff. And I'll send them a positive message, mm -hmm. you know, and then send them on their way. But I won't have any kind of like, you know, lasting conversation because right. i just don't see that as appropriate and if i were looking at like my nephew or nieces now they're all of age but if i was looking at their yeah. stuff like at an early you know when they were younger then i saw them messaging with the grown person i wouldn't care if it was like a comedian or something that yeah. they'd seen on tv it's i'd weird. be like you shouldn't be talking to that person yeah i also feel like um if a man is my age that's also too young if you're a 22 year old man, you need to grow up. What is your actual age? My I mean, like uh, the for dating. I mean, like your ideal man, I should say the age. Probably at least like 26. I'll let a 25 year old slide, but at least 26. Yeah. 27 is when they get real sexy. <laughs> yeah. But like probably 26. It used to be to 32, but I'm not really into that right now. So probably like 26 to 28. You mentioned ideally. that. Why don't you like the 32? Why does that become I don't know. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. I think I just don't. It's not feeling it right now. And you didn't feel they were particularly or like too old for you or are you just. I don't think they're too old or anything. No, I just I think it's a. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it right now. I might be feeling it next week. Who knows? Yeah, well, because I've definitely got to the point where like there are certain guys that are too young for me. Yeah. You know, like it, I can hook up. You know what I yeah. mean? If you're 21, 22, I mean, like, I'm going to be honest, that's sexy to look at. So I'm not going to pretend that, you know, I won't hook up with the 21 yeah. or 22 year old. But trying to actually chat with them, that's not going to be a thing because yeah. they just don't get any of my references and I don't know what they're talking about. And in a lot of cases, the younger guys like that in the gay community are like EDM kids or, oh, yeah. you know. And it's like, that's not my thing at all. I'm not going to go show up at an EDM and, you know. Yeah, no, I won't. I won't do that either. I mean, I have the body for the cute costumes. Yeah, but I'm also, it probably goes into, I am not someone that really likes going out. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why I like them a little older. Like, I like having fun. I'll fucking, I'll drink. I'll like smoke weed and stuff, but in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. I don't want to go out necessarily. You know, I feel the same way. Like, you know, I can. And right now I'm on a sober kick. You know, I think uh -huh. I'm 60 some days in now. Um, but I don't when I do actually like party and stuff like that, I prefer that, too. But for me, it's a different reason. For me, it's because I don't like to have to deal with Ubers and I don't oh, want to yeah. get a DUI and I'm not going to risk it. And so at this point in my life, I'm just like, you know, I, the headache of it all. I don't want to deal with you that. You know, that's why I drive a two seater. I don't want to drive anyone anywhere. If there's a group, I'm not driving. Yeah, you're you're smart for that because I have, drive. you know, four door. Mm -hmm. And you get stuck driving. Yeah, I do get stuck driving, and it's not cute the way they do me. <laughs> 
What do you mean? Because, you know, people will. I had one friend and this was very obnoxious and I'm not going to name this person's name, even though we're not friends anymore. And I could throw them under the bus. But let's let's break from tradition. Let's not be so predictable. (laughs) You know, like we don't have to always say a name. But yeah, one of his little tricks was. Uh, <laughs> That's how I, say the name. I love me. <laughs> Guys, that was really clever. If you don't get it, you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's either you got it or you don't. Uh, I was giving him a ride home and all of a sudden he's like, you know, can you take me to the Del Taco on the strip? And I was what like, choice. there is no Del Taco on the strip. You know, and he was like, yeah, and you know, because we were north of Stratosphere on the Strip. Uh And so I was like, there is no Del Taco on the Strip. And he was like, he was like, yeah, I think it's up here. And so like, you know, there wasn't. And then it turned out he was talking about the one on Charleston. Oh, my God. Which is Charleston and like past Eastern. That's not even the boulevard. Yeah, at all. You know, it's not even in the vicinity. It's further out than even where I am. So I was just like, you know. Um, I did drive him, but I have people every once in a while and I'm good at putting boundaries down, but sometimes people mistake that for me being rude. So sometimes I'll stop myself from enforcing the way I usually would. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, that's what I mean by people will abuse you when you actually can be the ride. Cause people will be like, can you stop by here real quick? Or can you yeah. do this? And it's like, no, I don't want to do all that. But also I'm a really bad driver. I didn't I didn't pass my driving test one time, but I have my license. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm being dead serious. When I was 16, um, I went and took the driving test. Failed. Then my dad brought me back the next day. Uh-huh. Failed. Yeah. And then he brought me back the following day. And keep in mind, I couldn't get an appointment three days in a row, obviously. Yeah. So we had to go in like before they opened, wait for an open spot, everything like that. Third day, failed. And I was like, okay, the third time was kind of bullshit because I learned how to drive in a Yukon, which is like a big truck. Yeah, yeah. And um, at the very end in the parking lot, I had to swing it into a parking spot. And so they failed me saying I drove on the wrong side of the road doing that. And I was like, that's not how it works. You obviously don't drive a Yukon, but whatever. And so I just started crying. (laughs) (laughs) I just started crying. You obviously don't drive a Yukon, whatever. (laughs) No Yukon, no Escalade. Get out of my face. But um, I just started crying. And they obviously know me because I've been here the past two days. And she, like, brought me aside. And at this point, I didn't even want a license. Yeah. I was like, fuck it. And she, like, brought me aside. And she's like, I'll pass you, but just don't do that again. And I was like, okay. Well, that was nice of her. I know. They were probably sick of me. I think I cried on the second time, too. Yeah, technically, I was supposed to get an automatic fail on my um, my driver's license test, too, when I was, like, 16 or whatever uh-huh. it was. Yeah, because I... Technically, I grew up in a small town, so I started driving... Well, really, I started driving when I was nine. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's when I started learning to drive. <laughs> and I remember one time I was harassing my dad to let me drive on my own, and he was like, no. And I was like just around the block and he was like no and he wouldn't let me do it so then I got my car I think when I was 14 was technically when I got my car you know which my dad should have known that was a mistake like you know (laughs) because but he was preparing because of course you know I was supposed to get my car right when I turned 15 and seven months so that I could get my permit and then drive yeah <clears throat> with or without an 18 year old driver which you were supposed to have an 18 right. year old licensed driver or whatever whatever um i never did and i i got in trouble for that one time but the cop that pulled me over was officer jim which was like our cop when we were a kid that would come to the school and stuff like that oh, yeah. and you know it was me and a bunch of other kids that had gone to the same school and so when we saw him we were like officer jim and it made him <laughs> i think sentimental that you know we were the kids you yeah. know what i mean because he dealt with us since kindergarten yeah so he was just like you know all right well you kids make sure you get back and so like th- that's the kind of town i grew up in and so like also with the driver's test person like they knew me indirectly and so, you know, when I was supposed to have an automatic fail because I was doing parallel parking uh-huh. and if you hit one of the cones, you're supposed to automatic fail. Well, I hit a cone and then they were like, oh, no. we'll just pretend that didn't happen. 
But you know what? I'm actually super fucking good at parallel parking. Not me. I'm so good at it. I'm actually, I say I'm a bad driver, which I am sometimes, but I'm actually a pretty good driver. My yeah. problem is I just drive a little, I drive fast, but that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. My um, my sister calls me Austin Powers when it comes to parallel parking, <laughs> you know, when he's doing the, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. I get it first try. Not me. No. <laughs> I I get it fifth try. <laughs> I get it when all of traffic behind me is mad. <laughs> if I'm in a like when I lived in LA, it was a fucking nightmare. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, you know, because LA is such a fucking boom, 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 and your traffic everywhere and stuff like that. And when I had to parallel park, people would get mad. They would honk and go around. I was that guy. Oh my god. And then they'd call me a fucking Asian. They were, they were very racist. Well, they should have checked their facts, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ty Rivera's a Mexican man. Check the whole facts. Transitioning <laughs> tonight only. <laughs> I'm an Asian woman. I'm a <laughs> proud Filipina. He's not just transitioning gender. He's transitioning races. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> These lashes are a lot. That's a natural lash too, babe. <laughs> yeah, I know you keep <laughs> saying it's a natural lash, but I don't know for what drag queen this is natural. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I I'm sorry. I need to watch how I talk to my guest. Yeah, I watch it. I don't know for what drag. I'm queen. starting a hashtag. You know, Everyone watch out. There was one time uh, my sister, because um, my mom hates perfume. My mom's like allergic to a lot of stuff, you know, and uh -huh. like the, the scent of perfumes will really make her like really have problems. How much you know? is she allergic to? Huh? How much? She's is like Paul from the Wonder Years when it comes to. Why don't you put her down? We've tried. <laughs> She's very resilient. She's not. She's very Brazilian? She Resilient. No. <laughs> Brazilian, will you shut up? We're Mexican, <laughs> but she's not going down, not without a fight. Trust me, we have tried. Oh, how we've tried. <laughs> but yeah, so one time my sister, my oldest sister, had sprayed a bunch of her perfume. Uh -huh. And it bothered me because it was enough that it really did bother me literally you know and i knew if it was bothering me then my mom's going through it at least three times as bad because my mom's just really sensitive it's not something she puts on she's not just being weird yeah. you know she just and so i personally won't wear cologne when i'm even at her house i don't even take it with me because i'm just like my mom can't deal with it uh and i it was me my mom my oldest sister and my little sister and i was like and i don't know why went and sprayed that fucking old lady perfume and then my little sister was like that's my perfume <laughs> get her get yeah her. so me me calling your lashes drag queen lashes is perfectly on brand for the way i always fuck up and say the wrong <laughs> thing i didn't mean it that's what i'm getting at no Just, it's fine you know i'm kind of an extra gal yeah, but also you are an actual girl, so it doesn't <laughs> look weird on like with me. It looks like a lot. It yeah. does look like you know, bam, <laughs> she's ready. <laughs> and uh, what I was gonna say earlier was, it's really funny that I like you so much because when I first saw you online, I thought I wasn't gonna like you. Claire from the internet. You were Claire from the internet at that point. And I thought you were an SJW type chick. And what happened was there was a situation where Claire had called out a comedian for being, would you say creepy or how, like what was, uh, cause I never it, it like really heard what your side was, you know I mean? Like, or what your complaint was. Honestly, I just, well, it was so something had happened that was annoying. Sure, someone else would have considered it creepy. It takes a lot to creep me out nowadays, but um, I'm sure someone else would have considered it sexual harassment. I don't care. I thought it was annoying at most. Um, I ignored it, and then the next day, the person that had made the comments and stuff 
messaged me and was like, just so you know, not sorry. And that part I was like, I'm going to get his ass. Yeah. Now you're stepping in here and disrespecting me just to make sure you know you're not sorry. Um, I was willing to look forward uh, past it anyways. But um, now you annoyed me even more. So, yeah, that's what that's genuinely what happened. It just annoyed me. And so I well, what happened was if anybody wants to know the story and I won't include names because, well, if Claire wants to include a name, she can. But I really don't care. Yeah, uh, I'm cool either way. It's, uh, it's public. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK. So there was a comedian that they call Kool-Aid. His name's Alex Ansel. Uh, I guess if we're going to come out with the name, I give the nickname out. <laughs> I don't know we're if we're going to say names. Name well, his name's Kool-Aid <laughs> Alex Ansel. His social security number is. <laughs> I think he's from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely from Texas. I met him in San Antonio several years ago through a friend of mine named Ponchi. We were on a show together at this little theater that they were trying to raise some donations for. I don't know exactly the way it worked out. I got paid decent, though. Got put in a hotel for two days, and I think I had another show in another place. Anyway... Kool-Aid is this guy's <laughs> name. And what happened was Kool-Aid was hanging out with the guy that Claire is good friends with. And Kool-Aid had asked this guy if he gets nudes from Claire. Here's the thing. He asked two of my friends. So this is what happened. I didn't know that. I thought no, it was just the one. No, the guy was stream. Uh, two of my friends were streaming on Twitch. Okay. It was over the pandemic. Some comedians started streaming on Twitch. Um, they started getting monetized for making money, which is really cool, actually. Um, but I was in the chat because they're my friends. I was supporting them. Um, and I guess Kool-Aid was in the chat, too. And um, he messaged both my friends that were on the chat asking for nudes of me. And I was like, that's kind of uncomfortable for my friends, but whatever. Like, we're all comics. It's funny. Whatever. We'll look past it. At most, like I said, I was annoyed. Yeah. Um. I was also kind of annoyed because I've never talked to this man in person once in my life. But okay. um, so at most I was annoyed. Yeah. Um, but I was like, whatever, I'll look past it. And then I went to sleep, woke up the next morning from to a DM from him saying, just so you know, not sorry about anything. And I was like, what a way to start my fucking day. Yeah. Now I'm annoyed. And so it originally started. I just took a jab on Twitter and I said something like, whatever, lose 300 pounds and see if people still think you're funny. Just some cheap jab. Um, which by the way, people can say to me too. No, I'm joking. But, um, you know, that's a jab that I've given people. Too. Yeah, no, <laughs> now <laughs> I know why we're friends. Cause <laughs> yeah, that's when I've definitely, it was just a cheap jab. Yeah. Um, but then all of a sudden, um, the other comics in Vegas saw my tweet, uh -huh. um, and started like DMing me saying, post it on Facebook, post it on Facebook. And I genuinely don't give a fuck. Um, cause I knew what would happen if it went on the comedian page on Facebook. Yeah. It would be like a weeks long thing probably. Um, but then I, guys, I get peer pressured. <laughs> <laughs> I get peer pressured. And so I posted it on Facebook and I was like, what the fuck ever? And of course it took off. Yeah. Um, guys, I went viral, but, uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> she did not go viral. <laughs> Not for that. She did not go by. I hate her so much. Um, you see why I don't like her. <laughs> but that's what happened. Yeah. And and uh, then you posted something like, you know. I didn't know what to caption. And I was like, this is y'all. What did yeah, I say? Yeah, this is your guy's hero or whatever. <laughs> this is the guy you look up to. And then I was like, something just cheap. to be clear, nobody <laughs> looks up to Kool-Aid. <laughs> and, and then somebody else commented something and I was like. I repeat, nobody looks up to Kool-Aid. <laughs> like, I was such a fucking... Um, and I was, like, really trying to be fun. And here's the backstory to that. Like, Kool-Aid has since been really shitty with me and stuff like that. But what he doesn't talk about is during that time, because he did go through a bummed out period because everybody was down on him. You know, everybody uh -huh. was pulling the, like, you know, he's a creep, like that yeah. kind of thing. And I um, was like, you know hit him up to let him know that you know like the whole world hadn't turned on him i'm still cool and i like you know i don't know what well, happened and actually here's the whole thing is a couple of days later me and kool-aid made up completely yeah because i move on from i don't dwell on anything i don't care like i said i was at most annoyed it was uh, not a big deal to me uh -huh. everyone else made it this big deal but personally to me was not a big deal i was just looking for an apology at that point because i felt disrespected um not even by the news comment, just by you going out of your way to tell me that. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but that's the thing. we we did make up. We made up, and then um, 
at some point, I guess he unfollowed me on everything, but still not a big deal. But we did personally make up. Well, he's weird like that because really he and I should have no problem. Yeah. You know, that like that shouldn't be a thing. But he's always bad mouthing me on the Internet like I've done something to him. And it's like, you know, I really haven't like now I'll be very. There was a point where I was very honest about the fact that I was completely cutting him off, you know, like uh -huh. and that was because he was doing creep shit um, different way than with you but doing creep shit and you know i was just like yeah i don't hang out with people like that so then i decided to completely cut him off but i wasn't having an issue where you know it was like you know it had been an ongoing thing mm -hmm. as far as i was concerned like you know he was cool it's whatever you know what i mean like i had tried to help him out at that time because it, like he was really bummed out and he was like you know because everybody did turn on him like they do sometimes on yeah. the internet you would know yeah, especially in the Vegas comedy <laughs> you community, they will turn on you. Yeah, guys, they, I'm next because I'm on unbothered. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll turn on you, and they're oh, such, they're gonna turn on a woman. Yeah, well, you know, they'll quickly abandon everything once they <laughs> once they decide. You know, because I've got people that are that have pretended to be SJW types attacking a gay man of color with lashes. Even with my lashes, they would still come for me, Claire. These people are ruthless. <laughs> They're dogs. They're going to snatch your lashes. <laughs> these bitches don't want it. <laughs> they snatch these lashes. It is really on. I'll tell you. You see me in public. Do not snatch my lashes. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind the fact that I won't be wearing lashes. So if you try to snatch my lashes, we really are going to fight. <laughs> like, those will be my actual lashes. <laughs> I've gotten to the point in public because sometimes you put them on wrong and you can feel it. I've gotten to the point where I've just taken them off and put them in my purse. <laughs> and you have to. Yeah. So, like you have to. Like if it's not working out, it's just not working out. Yeah, it gets to a point. If I look crazy, I look crazy. And so what was the feedback like after the whole situation happened with, you know, you calling out Kool-Aid? Were people immediately cool with you or did some people stay mad at you or what was the... I don't know if anyone was mad at me. I guess people might be. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, no one in the Vegas comedy scene has a problem with me. Um, and if they do, they can call me. But they probably don't have my phone number. If you don't have my phone number, we don't have a problem. Thank you. But... um. I don't think I have problems with anyone. Yeah. No. Um, but the immediate few, I got a bunch of messages and I don't really, I hate talking to people. I hate talking to strangers. Yeah. If people comment on my socials, I'm like, <laughs> uh, but, um, so I got a bunch of messages that were like, um, just like, I support you, whatever, whatever. And I was like, okay. Um, didn't get raped this time, but, um, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we support you claire yeah. <laughs> and then um and then i got a bunch of it was during quarantine and i got a bunch of people like when shows are back you got a spot on my show and i was like okay knowing that by the time quarantine was over i'm not gonna hit you up for it yeah i won't have a spot on your show yeah i'm not gonna text you after quarantine and be like hey remember that time that i canceled someone and you said i had a spot on your show <laughs> like yeah well that's why cancel. it wasn't canceling at all that's why i asked if there was any kickback on it because uh -uh. you know like for me i did get that idea and it was because i was friends with alex at the time and i was like you know is this girl an sjw i type? actually got in a fight it was publicly on the in the comments of that post with james johnson who's the sweetest guy ever i'm friends with him now yeah um was not friends with him at that time um and he commented something and i was just annoyed and i got in an argument with him and that's not really like me i don't get in arguments ever actually um just don't that's feel not like like it. him either you know what yeah. i mean you're not used to that and side i guess of him. i ended up telling him to suck my dick from the back um totally forgot that happened moved back to vegas <laughs> and he comes up to me in person he goes didn't you tell me to suck your dick from the back and i went maybe i don't know but we're cool now What's up, James? Shout out, James Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Is that offer still open? Can he still suck your dick from the back? <laughs> James Johnson, if you want to suck my dick from the back, you can. And I know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you got, hit her up. Hit up Claire Holly. You guys, my she, phone number is 702 <laughs> <laughs> You better shut up. 
<laughs> do not do that on this podcast. I have haters and they will flood. Your your phone will definitely get I flooded. I have 700 unread messages. Is that a crazy person thing? You know, it might be because I have uh, somewhere close to 60. <laughs> Yeah, so, 60 to 700 is a good range. Yeah, you know, like, you know. <laughs> and everybody knows I'm a little <laughs> ticky, ticky, boom, boom. <laughs> so you're at least 10 times worse than me, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. We both need to get medication, maybe. Maybe we should both. <laughs> I'm I, actually really happy. So so am I. Yeah, uh, and I don't know why two crazy people together. I'm actually really happy. Oh yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just feeding off each other. It really isn't healthy. It's just the worst habits being like. <laughs> hey, girl, do you think I'm crazy if I do this? No, girl, I do that too. <laughs> yeah, it's completely normal. It's like, well, they, that makes a lot the of blind sense. Leading the blind. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense that they're. Both happy and they both feel like everything they're doing is on track. They talk to each other. It's only them two in this world of enabling. It's just only enabling. them two in this world. It really is. And it really should be because these p- fools really do. You know, like I'm I'm with you, though, on the like text messaging and calling all the time or like text messaging i don't really mind you Uh know i mean like unless and i do agree with you like earlier claire had a friend of hers that was her hitting her up asking her a bunch of questions and that was getting on her nerves i feel the same way when people ask me too many questions i'm just like just see me when you see me and ask me then or whatever but all this back and forth with do you do this and can i do this and no here's the thing there's a handful of people I do enjoy texting and talking to. Um, very small handful, but those are the people I'm close to. Yeah. Um, if random people text me, DM me, whatever. I told someone, someone, someone Instagram DM me today and was like, um, when you come out to Houston, let me be your guide. And I replied and I said, I'm actually banned from Houston and all of Texas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What did he say back? He replied and he said, he said, oh, well, I hope at least it was fun. And I didn't even open the message. I was like, why the fuck do you think I'm actually banned from Texas? Yeah. What, what did I do to get banned from the entire state of <laughs> Texas? I know. I'm just, I'm setting myself up. And of course it was fun. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. And of course it was fun. <laughs> you know how much fun you have to have to get banned from an entire state? Everything's bigger there. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> I spent some time in Texas last summer. You know, this is why I can never get a man. And I'm going to be honest. Well, th- here's the thing. I said this before. It's 100% true. I can get a man. I just can't keep a man. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is because I say all these things about my sex life and everything else. And then nobody wants to take me seriously because... They feel like I've already fucked everybody, so I'm not good marriage material. But the thing is, I'm a gay man. And the secret that nobody wants to talk about in the gay community is every gay man has fucked a lot of people. It's just I'm very open about it. Yeah. I have not fucked a lot of people. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It's in the single digits. I'll say that. Really? I'm really picky. It takes a lot for me to like someone. I'm super fucking picky, especially in like online dating. You can nitpick a profile hard as fuck. Remember we were talking about that. Oh, Oh, yeah, we were (laughs) on the way back from Lake Havasu. (laughs) But you can nitpick a profile hard as fuck and I'll just get so picky. Um, But then like the guys that I do decide I like and I meet up with, um, either I get obsessed or I hate them. Uh, No, I'm joking. (laughs) Either I like them or I, we never talk again, and that's just how it works. But, yeah, no, it's in the single digits. Well, you're 22. Yeah, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 19. Yeah, so that helps. Yeah. You know, like, I, um, wow. I, I wouldn't even honestly be able to guess a number. Like, oh. for myself, I have no idea. And, you know, well, you know, I used to party. <laughs> I used to Mama used to get down Back in her day <laughs> Marmaduke over here <laughs> You know <laughs> Start doing so that bad. old lady shit Oh <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit 
Oh, you know how their legs just go on them like they can't, like they just start. <laughs> the best part is you know, the camera didn't see everything I saw. I know. Your mama used to get down back in her day. Don't didn't you? didn't see the legs at all, which <laughs> like killed me. The legs got me. Don't you kid yourself. Your mama used to get also, down. Ty put on his shoes to do this podcast in his house. I did. I Well, I feel weird when I'm just wearing socks and doing my podcast. I don't know why. Something feels I'm creepy barefoot. about it. I should have kept my Gucci's on. I brought my Gucci's. Yeah. You Well, you're wearing cute Gucci's and also you're relaxed, you know, and I'm glad for that. But I just feel like weird if I'm just wearing socks. I don't know why. For me, it's either shoes and socks or barefoot. There's not a... Uh yeah, no, that's fair. If I take my shoes off, the socks are coming too. Yeah, and also I, I was thinking about that the other day, and like it really does bother me that uh, my mom raised me so much. She hated dirty socks so much. Like you know what I mean? She would always be like, "Uh, uh don't be walking around in your socks. You know, go yeah. put on some chanclas or like she would do that kind of thing." And so um, I still have that with me, where I just feel like I don't want my socks to be dirty. Yeah. And so yeah, I um, hate dirty feet and dirty socks that's i can't do that yeah so do i especially like truly when you see somebody and their feet are black and you're just yeah. like okay i don't know how you're even comfortable walking around yeah, like I that don't know. um but yeah if i had to guess a number i wouldn't know because i did party back in my day and um you know and even now like there was one post i put up and people always ask me if these posts are serious. I will tell you guys, when it comes to my sex life and when I post about that on Facebook, I would never make any of that up. You it can't really is make just, this shit up. You really can't. You know what I mean? There was like, you know, the six that uh -huh. I did, that one where I said like, you know, in that joke where I say that, you know, like when everybody panicked and got toilet paper oh, on when oh, I got yeah? dick. Yeah, I, I did fuck around with six guys, and it was two threesomes and two singles was the way that worked out. Then I had another day, like, shortly after that, where it was, like, five, and that was also because I went and had, because I have a neighbor that I fuck around with, um, which I told Claire about. But I think that's gone bad. Oh, no. It expired? <sighs> Well, here's the thing. Every time, okay, if he invites me over for a threesome, it's always cool. Uh huh. But if I initiate bringing somebody to him, because, you know, he's never been to my place. I always go to yeah. his place. So if I initiate bringing someone to him, the person that I'm trying to bring to them, because, you know, they'll ask for pictures when yeah. they're on their way to come see me, will either say that they're not interested or they will just stop corresponding if I haven't hooked up with them before. You know what I mean? They'll just stop messaging with me yeah. um, because they're not interested in him. And I guess they don't want to say that. Or I can't say that. Maybe is he I ugly? No, but he is a little bit older. Oh, okay. And like uh, he has a nice body, but he's just like visibly older. And I don't think he's older than me do you 25 think, 25 uh, i don't think he's older than me but i do think he's uh white <laughs> <laughs> he ages badly yeah you know what i mean and so like it's just a different but yeah. also like the other thing that happens is i actually took somebody over there the other night and i don't know where they had met before or whatever but the guy they knew each other apparently they did and i didn't pick up on that when we walked in uh -huh. So we all did our thing or whatever, but the guy that I w had brought over kind of refused to have any real interaction with him. Hmm. But I really wasn't noticing that too much because it's all about me. Right. Like, I'm not worried about. Of course, you have the lashes on. Yeah. I, I wear the lashes in this family. <laughs> I wear the lashes in this relationship. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't really paying attention to it that much. I, afterwards, of course, you start thinking about everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once somebody says there was a problem, then you start getting like, oh, yeah. maybe something was amiss. But, you know, when it's all happening, you're not really thinking about it. Or I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, all I knew was... You're not the one having the problem. Yeah, everybody was happy with me. So. <laughs> it's like, life... Felt pretty good in that moment. 
And then all of a sudden it's like that, like, you know, where you're partying and then all of a sudden something goes wrong and every, <laughs> you don't realize it. It's like, yeah. what happened? You know what I mean? Like, it was one of those because I just was having a good time. You just time. wake up somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Generally, you're like, why am I in the, in the park? You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so we all were, well, I was messing around with them, I guess you could say. And then when, like, you know, I was done you know and i was had finished with the one that i had Ew. come with you know what i mean you <laughs> leave with the one you come with <laughs> <laughs> you know the rule leave with the one the you come you with <laughs> <laughs> only for those in need oh that's such a great use of that <laughs> saying leave with the one you come with um, but it was you know what i mean like so come with the one you leave with <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> it really does work for all occasions you can switch it up you can have fun use it as you will guys more of us need to have fun <laughs> that's my point point. and that loser wasn't down to and that non-fun haver. <laughs> yeah. And I had had a threesome with him and one of his friends the day before. Huh. He switched up quick. Quick, quick. Hmm. Oh, and I guess that night. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Do you TMI, see what TMI. I mean? <laughs> the point of this was the numbers get out of control. Do you oh. see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they really are. Because I just realized that was a lot of people in one day, too. You know what I mean? Like, you're, like, what I, you're like, my threesome yesterday, and then I had a bad experience with another one the next day. <laughs> yeah. And there was like, four right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> Actually, three, because it was the same guy twice. Yeah. Let's save something for marriage. Um. <laughs> Let's save something for my wedding night. But that's the other reason that I don't feel so. And I've said this before, and I know this is probably sexist thinking in some way, even though it's gay men. I'm Friend not lately. a bottom. So I don't really see that as me getting used up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I have bottomed before, and I'm not going to pretend I haven't. Yeah. But it's just, you know, that's not my regular thing. So when I'm having sex with all these guys, it's not me you know, yeah, so you're as not far getting as I'm torn up. Yeah, exactly. As far as I'm concerned, that's what makes me good marriage material. <laughs> <laughs> I would look so good in a wedding dress. Me too. White is definitely my color. It's probably yours too, because you're tan. Yeah, but you know, I I think I I would have to settle on a red at this point. <gasps> Actually, my mom wants me to get married in a red dress because that's like the Sicilian Italian thing. Um, but whichever dress looks better on me is the one I'll wear. Yeah, I'm sure you look great in red. Just your skin color and your hair. And yeah, I'm sure we'll red. We'll see. I'm going to be full blonde probably by next year. I'm anxious to see that. You had mentioned that. Yeah, because I'm naturally blonde. Can you imagine that? Imagine being over 20 years old naturally blonde. Grow up. Yeah, well, and I like I, you wear the dark hair so well uh -huh. that I really did think that was just your natural. I had box dyed it since 2017. Oh, box dye is tough to get out. I didn't yeah. realize the reality of that until I decided to, you know, go blonde. I was supposed to have another highlight session last month, mm -hmm. but my hairstylist at the last one was like, um, we're going to have to take a couple inches off. And I was like, girl, there's no next session then. Yeah, I remember you saying that. And I relate to that when they talk about cutting more hair than you're ready for. Sorry, it's like, won't do it. No, we're not doing that. That's not happening. It no. has to be beyond return for me to cut my hair. Yeah, not on my watch. I don't. I don't. You know what? This is a conspiracy theory. I don't buy the fact that your hair grows faster when you trim it often. Wrong. Hairstylist attack below. I won't be reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stop preparing yourself for like... Oh yeah, the hair the hairstyling community is on my... Is on my podcast. That's all... That's... You just... God damn it. We ride at dawn. Yeah, I was just about to ink a deal with Matrix. I'm a Paul Mitchell girl, so <laughs> let me ruin everything. <laughs> I'm bedhead. Yeah. Technically, I'm bedhead. Actually, I do like bedhead a lot. Yeah. I love bedhead. No, bedhead will really like. They have great products. Yeah, especially their um, super hard hold or whatever it's called. I can't remember the name of it, but they I have. I like a, anything super hard. They have. Uh, I hate you so, so do I though. Uh, 
if we're being honest. But yeah, they have this extra hold uh, hairspray uh-huh. that I really like from them. And I can't remember the name of it. You know, you just get used to using products and then you forget the actual. Yeah, I just know what it looks like. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, for like um, more like this kind of when I want it to actually move. Then I use the Sally's version of Kenra. Oh, yeah. You told me about that. Yeah. And I got some really great deal on it last time. I want to say it was like five bottles for $20. My problem is I need um extra hold because I have a lot of hair. Yeah. I need like an extra hold, but I still need it to be flexible. So my problem is I buy like flexible hold and I use way too much of it. Yeah. But works. That's the kind of good. man I, I need. Fuck. Yeah. Extra hold, but still flexible. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> We're sad. <laughs> the point of this podcast is me. And is the dating sad. community gonna be in the comments? Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Leave your comments below. I won't be paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, that's not that's not what you say. That <laughs> I'm blocking the word hairstylist, but I'm accentuating the word. Yeah. Date oh, me. <laughs> what you want to date me? Leave your comments below. I won't be reading the comments. Right. <laughs> I'm 22 years old, 5'5". Five five. Um, I do have to pay a parking ticket by September. I have three tattoos. <laughs> Sorry um, if you don't like them inked up, but... <laughs> <laughs> did you say inked up? I did. Your three tattoos. <laughs> Which your three tattoos? <laughs> Stir it with your dick. <laughs> Stir it with your dick. That's an inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other one. Smash it against my pussy. <laughs> the funny thing about those stories is Claire was the one that said, Stir it with your dick. And I was the one that said, Smash it with my pussy. And it was in the same night. And it made neither of them made any real sense. Okay, well, This is what happened. We were at a Jenny's, which is just Denny's, but Ty was there, so it was gay. Yeah, so it was Jenny's. <laughs> we were at Jenny's, and we had a waiter, um, and I said, can you mix the cheese into my eggs, please? <laughs> yeah, and- well, I, I remember I asked, because I ordered um, scrambled eggs with cheese, uh-huh. and then a lot of times they'll just put the, like, if it's American cheese, they'll just put the slice on yeah. top. If it's shredded, they'll just- Oh, trust sh- me, babe, I get it. Yeah. And so I asked him specifically, I was like, would you mind asking the cook if he can just mix the cheese around in the eggs? And he said, I guess I could <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, something he was stupid. like, he was like, yeah, I can ask him. And then he was like, I don't know if he'll do it. You know, maybe I can just <laughs> yeah, as if we care who's actually stirring it. Yeah. And so that's when it just came about. Stir it with your dick. Um, sorry, Dakota at Denny's in Lake Havasu. Yeah, and Dakota and Lake Havasu, never mind the lashes. I would definitely. I told you, th- me and Dakota. He was into it. We had a quick chat. Um, mm-hmm. as he, we he, he, he complimented your tattoos and not mine. Well, he didn't know you were inked up. I know. He Sorry didn't know if you how inked like, up bad you were. girls. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. <laughs> Trust me. It only lasts for so long. <laughs> Don't end up like me, Claire. Be a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what is in my throat i apologize to you claire you i apologize COVID? to the home viewing audience i don't know what is happening but apparently there's something phlegmy going on which could only be from cigarettes because you know i yeah. haven't been smoking weed i haven't been doing anything that would cause any kind of blockage so i don't know I was coughing a lot this morning, um, but I had something in my throat, so I just drank water. You're not a cigarette smoker, though, at all. No, I don't smoke cigarettes. Yeah, good. Stay that way. Um, except sometimes when I'm drunk, I'll have one. But don't do that. Stop yourself. Seriously. Okay, I will. I'm not joking. Because, you know, like, the thing with smoking, I'm going to tell you, I forever, forever, like, you know, because I started smoking when I was 13 years old. Uh-huh. I know. You would never guess. I'm so classy. But, yeah. 13 years old is when I started smoking. Uh-huh. And I remember until I was probably in my mid 20s. I <laughs> Is that stupid. 
<laughs> I'm exposing a lot here. <laughs> this is, I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. I don't know. <laughs> but it's only if someone offers it, which doesn't happen much, because not a lot of people around me smoke. Yeah, uh, but anyway, till my <laughs> mid-20s, I was completely able to take it or leave it, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was just hooked, and that's what it was. And now I smoke cigarettes forever. And uh -huh. I've, you know, taken breaks or whatever, but it affects my weight because my body's so used to using it as an appetite suppressant. Yeah. And it does serve as a diuretic, which a lot of people don't know that about nicotine, but that, you know, that helps as well as far as keeping your weight down and stuff like that. And it changes, you know, like it, mentally you do get a little bit like, you know, it, you withdraw. And so, you know, I'm just hearing a lot of reasons for me to start smoking cigarettes. Well, we'll have one after. And you <laughs> let me you're sober right now. I said, don't do it when you're drunk. <laughs> uh oh. As long as you're making an informed, sober decision. <laughs> I'm in support of you, Claire. We're friends. <laughs> I'm not here to down you. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Thank you. Camel Crush, though, if you do, <laughs> because, you know, then you can have them sort of menthol or they're kind of a light cigarette if you I don't, don't crush my them. My problem is, like, if I have to go out of my way to buy something from a gas station, nah. Well, now you just made me feel extra trashy. <laughs> Sorry, not my thing. <laughs> if a gas station has to be part of my shopping experience, <laughs> I'm just like, wait a second, how are we judging my life? I, girl, I walked in here with the Gucci's and the Kate Spade. Save this for when I want go on your podcast. Do <laughs> you want to judge me? God damn it, we're in my house. Bijou. Someone's getting a little bothered. Release the Kraken. <laughs> Bijou's just going to eat my feet. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to let her. <laughs> let her rip. <laughs> Get her. Get that bitch. Get that bitch. Get that white bitch. <laughs> Don't forget what I showed you. I train her with an oven mitt. <laughs> <laughs> That's our attack dog training is just me with an oven mitt. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I woke up so mad this morning, though. Why? Um, because what had happened was... What had happened oh, was... No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> we shouldn't do that. I, what should happen was. I, I woke up and my leg cramped for 10 minutes. <laughs> it hurt so bad. I didn't mean to switch topics like that, but my leg is still sore. <laughs> I had to go to my mom and have her massage it. <laughs> I wish I had your problems. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just too ripped. I wish I had your problems because the truth about me is I sometimes get the cramps in the middle of the night um, and I have that hernia. Oh, yeah. Which I've talked a bit about, but I refuse to get it fixed because <laughs> I don't want to take time off going to the gym. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's my crazy. But um, yeah. And so like, you know, it. It does hurt, especially when you like jolt it out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if I just get up and throughout the day, it kind of like I'm probably going through more pain than most people realize most of the time. Not that I want anybody to feel bad for me. Aww. But, you know, if you do Venmo, Ty Rivera dash. I'm banned. Can we do cash up? Ty Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> cash. <laughs> you know, dollar sign Ty Rivera. Just. Right up. I got it. I was surprised. I'm like, there's not a broke Ty Rivera <laughs> running around that's fucking already got this. All right. Well, I guess it's all me then. <laughs> I just treated it like chips at a casino, I guess. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's me then. <laughs> Send it on over. <laughs> but yeah. So um, if I'm like once in a while, I'll get a cramp in the middle of the night. And if I jump up right away, it's double sucks because, you uh -huh. know, you got to jump up so you get rid of the cramp. I jump up and my hernia hurts and then the fucking cramp and all that pain hitting you at one time in the middle of the night. Yeah. It really is like, you know. Yeah, I, I was really mad. I just went back to bed until 3 p.m. I don't blame you. When I say middle of the night, I mean like 1 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> It's the middle of the uh, night. The sun was out. Yeah, I like how we both have the same opinion of what sleeping hours are. It's kind of like, well, you know, what do you want? <laughs> you want a nine to five? Fuck a banker. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not. I'm not that gal. 
But yeah, so um, what do you have coming up and what are your, I will tell you this just because I want everybody to know it. This is one thing I want everybody to know for sure. If you take nothing else from this episode, other than I'm clearly transitioning, um, Claire Hawley is one of my favorite, favorite new comics on the scene, like, you know, newer comics working the scene. I've said it before. Her and Anthony Victorson are two of the people that I really do like and support when it comes to actual stand-up. And it's not just because they've both been good friends to me. It really is based off, like, I would say that really the fact that you guys are both talented is the reason that I'm friends with you and not the opposite. You know what I mean? It's not, We're not friends with ugly people out here. There you go. It is that same kind of thinking. Like, yeah, I don't have time to just be nice. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, you got to be talented. You got to be somebody that I, and I've said this before on my podcast, just when I've been doing it solo, you have to be a talented person because I want to be able to help you out. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, especially if we're friends from stand up, I want to be able to say, oh, I've got this gig. Like, I took Claire to Lake Havasu with me. I took her and Ryan Barasa and it was like because I like what she does and I was like all right well we can fit in a guest set and so I want to see you grow but that's one thing I will tell you guys it, my thinking is when it comes to you and stand up I know you're young so if it takes you a while to actually get the life experience to actually you know really do stand up full time or really pursue it or you know whatever you have to do to get there Take your process the way you need to take it. But definitely, 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 I want you to keep doing stand-up. Yeah, I'm definitely going to. Um, but like I was talking to her earlier, time in my head just goes by so fast. And before I know it, I haven't been to a mic in a week. And I'm like, I was just there yesterday. Um, you know, crazy bitches. But um. <laughs> <laughs> we, both, we talked about that. I have that problem, too, um, where it's just like time passes. And you're like, I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't feel it. <clears throat> But yeah, no, I am. I am going to keep with it. Um, yeah, I'm going um, to Chicago. Chicago. I'm going to see if I can get a guest set out in Chicago. Okay. I posted in their Facebook page. Um, no one answered. I'll post again. I don't give a fuck. I'll be annoying. But um, I'm also going to see a Cubs game. I love baseball. D-backs won today. <laughs> well, that's why I tell you, you know, like, we're, like live your life the way you're going to live it. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, d have fun. Be young. You know, you're 22. So, like, I wouldn't recommend people jump in the way that I did, but I jumped in later than a lot of people well, did. Well, the thing is, I have time to do both. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So, like, um, with me, I kind of had to stop that part of life. Like, even now when I talk about being slutty and having fun yeah. and stuff like that, I took a long break from that where I was just working on stand-up and grind or wasn't wasn't a thing yeah. when I first started doing stand-up so it was like an either or yeah no I have time for both especially I don't have a very big social circle or anything mm -hmm. like I know um I'll post and I'll hang out with a bunch of people at the mics but I'm not friends with a bunch of people yeah like no one has my phone number so I have I have time um I just have to remember to do things <laughs> yeah I just have to remember time passes yeah that's what i would say like if you and if you can commit to at least two mics a week and yeah. it doesn't matter if they're you know sunday and monday or you know what yeah. i mean like <laughs> or you just want to get them out of the way or if you want to yeah. make them like you know beginning and end of the week or whatever yeah. you decide to do just like you know make sure that you do still stay out there somewhat but like yeah i would say like you know live your life too because otherwise you don't have shit to talk about shit to write about you yeah. know like that was part of why i was able to take the break from regular life yeah. and just be a comic was because i had already stored up and that's the thing is a bunch of comics go on and talk about like technicalities of comedy and i'm yeah. like what do you think an audience wants to do with that yeah Shut the fuck! No, I'm joking. Shut the fuck up! But it's true. I feel I'll like that. Them. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like that when I'm. I used to like people at the show. <laughs> I'll like, like them. yeah, I, I would like people at shows <laughs> when I would get tired of them. One time, I got in a lot of trouble over that. That was like one of my first big controversies in L.A. You were lighting people. Yeah. <laughs> Some people deserve it. I've been working for this lawyer. Um, like he was. He wanted to learn stand up, uh -huh. and he was paying me thirty dollars an hour to teach him stand up, which now that's not as great as it was at the time, uh -huh. you know, at the time, $30 an hour was great, you yeah. know, and like, I gotta be honest, I, um, 
this motherfucker liked to waste my time. And so I was very honest with him about the fact that, like, you know, I don't care if you want to waste time, but understand you're going to pay for every hour that I'm here. Yeah. So, you know, and I had to deal with him because I'm not about cheating anybody. My thing was this. Every hour that we're at your house, because, you know, he worked from home and stuff like that. Uh He was in construction default law. That's what his thing was, you know. And so he dealt a lot with uh, class action and that, you know what I mean? It wasn't a lot of like him actually having to be in the courtroom. A lot of things got settled. And so um, he worked from home. And so he would want me to come to his place and he would tell me war stories about, you know, like construction defect law. And, um, you know, he did uh, like the mock trials for. I can't remember if it was Berkeley or like, you know, there was some like school. school. Yeah. Pepperdine, I think was what oh, it was. Okay. And so, um, you know, and he was respected. He was good, obviously. And so um, he was paying me $30 an hour. <clears throat> and because I had that rule with him, you know, there was one week he had me for 40 hours. <laughs> I Gave clocked him for all 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like. You're Keep like, it coming, boo boo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ain't no discounts here. We pay for every hour out here. Also, we work in units. So if we go into the next hour, 15 minutes, billable. <laughs> you know, like, you're a lawyer. You know how this works. You I know, to figure out how to get people to give me money. It'll but happen. here's the problem is um, I have good jobs. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. You find your way. You are smart about that. You're I good about good that. I have good jobs. I started in sales at like 18. Yeah. And I was making way more than an 18-year-old should make. Um, timeshare sales. But, um, yeah, I just recently left that. But now I'm going back into health insurance, which is still good. Yeah, <laughs> And no. I'm going to dental hygiene school. So, babe, I may act stupid, and I am. No, I'm joking. But I'm not. There you I go. have fun, guys. I have fun. That's why we relate. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of power in being dumb. <laughs> Some people think that I'm the most stupid person in the world, and I love it. It's I great. Think it's so fun, especially when it really does come naturally. Because uh-huh. I don't put any of it on. You know what I mean? I it's just like the stuff I'm good at. I'm good at, yeah. and the stuff that I'm good at happens to be good at making money. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it's like I'm not gonna pre- like pretend to be smarter than I am for whose sake? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, as long as I can get the job done, as long as I can get everything paid then why am I going to spend my time just being like, oh, I read this book? No, I didn't. Why no, would I, didn't. I read? Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not reading a lot of shit. I'm not going to read when I can drink an entire bottle of Moscato and have fun. And watch a movie. And yeah. And get the same story. You know what I mean? It's like, why would I read that whole book? Full offense to book readers. Sound off in the comments. We won't, <laughs> we, won't <laughs> we won't read them. We just said we don't read. You think we're going to read the comments? <laughs> We, we actually just can't read we just <laughs> cracked the whole puzzle for you guys like we're not gonna read it because we can't <laughs> i didn't mean to expose all write that. it on a dollar <laughs> bill and send it to you <laughs> my address is five <laughs> <laughs> send it all to my address on the ones for claire put care of claire holly <laughs> i'll make sure she gets her money trust me i'm gonna get plenty <laughs> on the uh, i hate you because you don't read trust me, we're gonna come out with equal envelopes so i'm not gonna be trying to pinch anybody's money well, i on love this when um people like share bullshit statistics on social media all the time oh yeah and they're like statistics say that people that read books are smarter and it's like first of all no second of all (laughs) don't care (laughs) yeah well they're not gonna start reading (laughs) there was that study not too long ago that everybody was putting out that you know um people who curse more are actually more intelligent so just refer them to that (laughs) you know what i mean i'm always like have you heard my mouth (laughs) come on like, I'm the most intelligent fucking person you know. <laughs> but yeah, what I was going to say was the first one of the first times I got in trouble back in L.A. Uh-huh. was for actually lighting people. And it was because I was working for that lawyer and I was getting thirty dollars an hour. And I was annoyed with him because I felt like he really was wasting my time because like I had the deal with him. Like, you know, look, if you don't want to pay me thirty dollars an hour, this is the way you can get around it is we can spend a couple hours at your place actually working on the material that you have to work on because he had a convention that he was doing that he wanted to do his presentation in a stand up style. So we definitely had 
a mission and I was like, you know, we can work on that at your place for like a couple hours and then we can go to an open mic together. And if we go to an open mic together, I won't charge you per hour because we're doing something that I need to do anyway, you know, so uh -huh. I'll still watch you do your set and I'll critique you off of that, but you won't be getting charged for any of that time. And um, he refused to do that. And so it was one night where I'd been working for him for the full, like probably six to eight hours that day. And then I had to do a show out in like Orange County, which he lived all the way in the valley. So it's long haul to get across. Okay. And so I finally get to this set and the, um, the guy that runs the show is a submissive. The mic is a submissive and not not in a joking way or just like using words. He's an actual submissive. So he doesn't like to put his foot down. He doesn't like to uh -huh. actually enforce the light. So he's just letting all these open micers do as long as they want. And I'm there. I remember it to this day. I was there for $60 and I was supposed to headline it. Well, headliners go last. Yeah. And the guy that went up right before I started lighting everybody had done 20 minutes. At an open mic? Yeah. Get him off. And there were 20 some people on the list to go. I remember it being like 25 because it turned into an actual thing yeah. on MySpace. Just to give you an idea of how long ago this was. It was an actual thing on MySpace. People MySpace blogged about it, which it used to take a lot for people to try to cancel you <laughs> on MySpace. But to wait for someone to hang up the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to cancel. Get off the phone. <laughs> I want to cancel Tyra Barrett. Get off the phone. <laughs> I got to make another call. <laughs> Ahoy. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Operator, can you connect me with... <laughs> But yeah, so it was those days. And so I was got annoyed after the 20 minute guy. And then I just started lighting people, like, you know, and so. Well, it wasn't supposed to be five minutes. Oh, uh, I don't know what it was supposed to be because the sub didn't have actual times oh for people. God, you know what, what I mean? Shit show. Yeah, I made it five minutes. That's what I started yeah. lighting people at. But you know what I mean? Like I, there really was no it was the most bizarre thing. And the fact that people were mad at me really did surprise me. You know, that was my first getting surprised on the Internet where I was like, people are mad about that. Yeah. But, you know, and that's what it I is. think it's more disrespectful to take 20 minutes at an open mic. That's what I feel like. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't think that should happen, but it is what it is. Anyway, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Unbothered by Tyra Vera. And I hope that you will check out Claire Wherever she wants to be checked out, where do you want people to check you out? You can follow me on anything. Just don't reply. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Just be quiet about it. You can follow anywhere. Just be quiet. My Instagram it. is at hugh.heffer, H-E-F-F-E-R. Um, I get annoyed when people question that because it's just a silly, fun name, guys. Um, my I Twitter. I think what? of Pitbull when I read the Hugh Heffer. Really? You don't think of Hugh Hefner? Well, because Pitbull had that line in one of his songs, they call me Hugh Heffer. Oh, got so many <laughs> is it really? Yeah. He, it's oh, like my God. I'm a hack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually collect those celebrity name pun Instagram names. I also have one that's David Blowy and I have one that's Lamar Odam. But anyways, I don't use those two. Point is also David tw Blowy. <laughs> Twitter at SMDWMD. Um, don't ask me what it stands for. I'll tell you right now. It's suck my dick weapon of mass destruction. And <laughs> my Facebook's just my name. And actually I always wondered what your <laughs> <laughs> It's suck my dick weapon of mass destruction. Oh my god. Um and then I actually just restarted my Snapchat. If anyone wants to add me on there, I won't add you back, but you can see my story. Um it's Holy Claire. <laughs> why are you back on snapchat that's what i was gonna ask you when i saw that i was like what year is this because people and by people i just mean um one person peer pressure guys i get peer pressured i get peer pressured and um they kept saying why don't you snapchat and i said because i like texting you can send pictures on text you can text on text um it doesn't get deleted i like to have receipts 
Um, but then I was like, whatever, it could be a silly fun thing. So I re-downloaded it. I want to judge you, but, you know, I'll tell you a quick story about me. A couple of years ago, I was dating this boy. I used to call the Vietnamese pretty boy. And mm-hmm. he was uh, Snapchat only was like really his main. Uh-huh. And I started using my Snapchat again just for him. And I I got peer pressured. Um, I don't think it's going to last that long because ever since I started doing that, people have been just Snapchatting me instead of texting me. And I reply and I say, I hate this format. <laughs> <laughs> Text it to me. My phone number it. <laughs> you got to have boundaries, Claire. It's I know. good for you. I'm glad you have boundaries. You may get peer pressured, but in the end, I do have boundaries. You'll you'll pull them out and be like, "Nope, like, we're not doing it." I get peer pressured, but I'll tell you right now, I'm never doing meth. You're off to a good start. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stay unbothered. 